Hello everyone. My name is Rahul and welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, let's look at how to deploy a Windows service on a virtual machine using Azure DevOps as the build and deploy pipeline. I will be using an Azure virtual machine. However, this could be any other virtual machine that's running on your infrastructure. We will see how to set up a deployment agent on a virtual machine and get Azure DevOps to deploy to that. One feedback that I received from my previous videos was to go a bit slow. So I'll try that in this video. Let me know how it goes. Here, I have a Windows service already set up. I'm using Top Shelf to create the Windows service. If you're new to Top Shelf, check out the link in the description below to get more details. Top Shelf allows us to run the Windows service as a console application and also as a Windows service. So while in development, you can run this just like any other console application and also deploy this as a Windows service. This is simply a heartbeat service, which keeps sending a message every five seconds. This sends a heartbeat message to an Azure queue heartbeat. The service name and connection string are served from the app.config, which will be mapped as release variables in the DevOps pipeline. Let's run this code and see if this sends a message. The application is now running. Let's head off to the Azure portal and check the message queue. Under the storage and under queues, you can find the heartbeat queue and the messages are coming here. If I clear the queue, you can see the new messages starting to come every five seconds. This is the latest message that just came. The code for the Windows service is pushed up to an Azure DevOps project where we will be setting up the build release pipeline. If you are interested to find the source code and the pipeline, check out the link in the description below. We'll need to first set up the build pipeline for this. Head off into the pipelines and create a new pipeline. Choose the Azure Repos Git YAML file, which will give us a YAML file that we can use and be part of the source control. We'll choose the repository that we are interested in and also select a template for this. Since this is a Windows service, I'll choose .NET Desktop to start with. The template by default gives us a few steps which we can reuse. Since we don't have any tests set up at the moment, I'll remove this step. The output of the build pipeline is a zip package, which we can take and then deploy to the virtual machine. So to create the zip package, let's first build this whole application. So we have the VS build going on here, which uses the solution file, which comes from a variable within the pipeline. Let's set up the output folder for the VS build task so that all the binaries that we need to package gets pushed out into there. To open up the assistant, let's click the settings here. We need to specify the output part for the MS build so that all the bin output folder gets written into here. We can use the binaries directory that's available by default in Azure DevOps. To refer to a variable, we use the dollar and then build.binaries directory. It will be also nicer if we can separate this based on the build ID so that it remains isolated enough when there are multiple builds running. To get that, we'll use variable referencing syntax and pass in the build.build ID, which will be the identifier of the build. Once this is set up, click add, and that writes back out here. So this is going to build out the solution and push the binaries into this output path. We can now archive this path and then publish it as an artifact. To add the next step, make sure the mouse cursor is on the route position and then search for the archive task. We'll choose the archive files and then specify the binaries directory, which is there by default. This will be pushed up as a zip into the artifacts staging directory, which is all default values for the archive file step. I need to specify the build ID here because that's where each of our build outputs are getting pushed into. Make sure to uncheck this so that it doesn't include these root folder into the zip archive paths. Let's add that step. This will add the corresponding YAML definitions into the file. This creates a build id.zip file into the archive. Once that's created, let's publish this file as an artifact for this whole build pipeline. To do that, again go to the assistant and select for publish artifacts. You can choose publish build artifacts. We can specify the artifact staging directory, which is unique for each build, and then you can push up the files in there. Clicking add and making sure the cursor is in the right position, it'll add the settings file inside there. With these steps, we should have a successful artifact, which is zipped up folder of our output path, which is basically the bin slash release directory in this case, because the build configuration is release. Let's save this and trigger off a new build, which is happening automatically. All the steps that we just added appears here as different jobs. And you can see some of these are the default ones with the template and the archive files and publish build artifacts are the ones that we added in later. The build is successful. 
So let's go back to the summary and look at the artifacts that's getting published for this build. It has a drop folder under which we have the build ID and a zip file. Let's download the zip file and open up the archive to have a look inside. This is the bin folder with the heartbeat queue service as an executable and the configuration file as well. Before we leave, let's make sure we rename the service so that we know exactly which one we created and we'll call this heartbeat service. Let's head off to the release pipeline so that we can start creating a new release under the new release pipeline. We'll start with an empty job because there's no template that matches exactly what we need. So I'll click empty job and name the stage as test. Let's close this and we can start adding tasks here. Let's rename this as heartbeat service and save this to start with. Since we need to deploy this application into a virtual machine, we need to connect this first to Azure DevOps. We can do that by using the deployment groups. So under deployment groups, let's create a new deployment group and call this test environment. This is a test environment for heartbeat service or whatever description that suits you. This gives us a PowerShell script to register the virtual machine onto Azure DevOps. Let's use a personal access token to authenticate this to the Azure DevOps account. Clicking that is going to insert a personal access token into the script. So let's copy this and connect to the virtual machine. I will be using a virtual machine on Azure itself. So I have a virtual machine that's already created for this demo. So let's click and connect to that. So let's use the RDP session so that we can remote desktop into this virtual machine and start running the PowerShell script. This connects successfully to the remote desktop. Right now, I am RDPing into the virtual machine running on Azure. I'll minimize this so that you can clearly understand the difference between my host machine and the virtual machine. In Azure, if you have forgotten your password, you can reset that under support and troubleshooting. You can specify a username and specify the password. Make sure when you connect to the RDP, you use a slash and the username because it's a user on that machine itself and not any domain joined in this case. However, your scenarios might differ. So let's go back to the virtual machine. Let's run the scripts that we got from Azure DevOps under an administrator PowerShell account. So let's go back to the deployment group. Make sure you have the personal access token, copy the script, go back to the virtual machine and paste this in here. You can see there is a PAT token, which is the personal access token that's getting injected here. So let's run this and this should start setting up the Azure agent on this machine. So you can see there's a C called an agent folder that's getting created with an A1 that's an instance inside that. This is going to take a couple of minutes. So if we head back to the Azure DevOps and look at targets, it should soon appear here. The moment it has connected to the server, you can see there is a YouTube demo that's coming up under our targets for the deployment group that we just created. The script is completed and the agent is running successfully. Let's go back to DevOps and you can see this is now healthy and online. We can now use this deployment group to deploy our application so that it gets deployed to the virtual machine. Let's look at how to do that. Heading back to the releases and continuing on with the release that we had created, let's start adding the steps to our test stage. Since ours is a deployment group job, let's add a new deployment group job under the test deployment process. We don't need the agent job, so let's remove that from our pipeline. Under the deployment job, let's make sure to select the deployment group, which is the test environment that we just created. I'll leave the rest of the settings as default and start creating new tasks under this. Since a build output is an archive file, let's extract this onto a folder. So search for the extract task and add this to our pipeline. So this looks for any of the zip files and then unzips that. Since this deployment is going to run on our virtual machine, the destination folder is going to be a folder on the virtual machine. So I can specify a folder where I need to run the application. So let's specify heartbeat service. Once the files are extracted, we need to replace the variables because we had the connection string and the server's name as part of the app.config. So let's add a new job to file transform the variables. So search for file transform and add that to the pipeline. The package or folder is going to be a heartbeat service folder. So let's specify that. Let's choose the file format as XML because our app.config is an XML file. Under the targeted files, we can either specify star.config or be explicit and say heartbeat service exe.config file because that's the configuration file that gets bundled up. Next, we need to install and start the service. So let's add a command line task 
to do that. Let's name this as install. Under advanced, let's specify the working directory as c colon slash heartbeat service and use the top shelf command line features to run this. Top shelf comes with a command which you can easily use to install, uninstall, start and stop the services. Let's remove this and specify the heartbeat service dot exe and say install. To start this back again, we can add in a new line which says start. So this installs the service and then starts this in the next step. If the service is already installed, which is going to happen from the second run of this pipeline, we'll need to uninstall this first so that we can install it. So let's clone this task and call this uninstall and drag this up so that this happens as the first step. However, the very first time that this pipeline is going to run, the heartbeat service.exe file is not going to exist. So let's make sure we add a check to see if the C colon heartbeat service exists. We're done with all the tasks. So let's make sure we add the new variables for this. So we have two variables to be added. One is for the queue connection string and the service name. So let's add in the queue connection string and give in the value for the queue. For now, I'll use the same queue that the development machine was using. However, this will change depending on your environment. So, and I'll mark this as a secret so that this is not visible anymore. Let's also specify the service name and call this heartbeat service test. Note, I have not pushed up these connection strings from the source code into the source control. This is just for testing purposes in the local machine. If you want to learn more about variables and variable groups and how to organize them, check out the video linked here or in the description below. Once all that's set up, let's go back to the pipeline and make sure we link the artifact that's required. This is going to be the artifact coming from the build pipeline that we had set up. So let's choose the heartbeat service and specify that as the artifact for this pipeline. Let's click save again and create a new release. The release is in progress. So let's click that to get the details. This is running on the YouTube demo deployment agent that we had created on the virtual machine. You can see the steps which we added. So this is first downloading the artifact, uninstalling if any of the files exist. It's doing the file transforms and then installs and it is running successfully. So let's go to the virtual machine and you can see a heartbeat service folder here, which has all the executable files. Let's go to the Azure queue to make sure this is starting to send the messages. Let's clear the queue and refresh this. We can see this is starting to send a message from the test environment that we had created just now. If we go back under the services.msc, we can find the heartbeat service test that's up and running. The next time you make any change to the source code, this pipeline will get automatically triggered and deploy a new release of your service. Hope this video helps you to set up a build deploy pipeline for a Windows service onto a virtual machine. In this case, you saw how to use an Azure virtual machine, but this is the same as any virtual machine that you would have running on your own environment. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe. Thank you.